Hello, welcome to the next few lectures which are going to be about chromatography. So in the first number of lectures uh, videos, we are going to look at chromatography generally and then after that we are going to dig deeper into both gas chromatography as well as liquid chromatography. And probably you have actually uh, done some kind of a chromatography already. So you could have, for example, done uh, thin layer chromatography in organic synthesis to uh, check the purity of your substances, or you might have done the column chromatography uh, to uh, separate uh, your synthesis products from the uh, byproducts that have um, occurred during your synthesis, for example. But here in this course, uh, we are going to look more deeper into the analytical chromatography. Um, so one type, um, a simplest type of chromatography that uh, everyone experiences sometimes is actually a paper chromatography. Uh, for example, if you have a, a, some kind of a paper where something has been written with a pen, and it accidentally happens that something is spilled on this paper, then um, if you might observe that as the paper is wetted by this um, solution, uh, the, the letters that have been written with the pen are being blurred and you can see different colors appearing. And this is actually the simplest kind of chromatography that happens in our everyday life and also one of the most uh, simplest uh, chromatography that uh, is used to demonstrate chromatography for school kids. So uh, when we had a brown paper, um, brown pen written uh, text chromatography before, then after the uh, chromatography separation on the paper, accidentally caused by uh, water ethanol mixture, then we can see that actually this ink in this pen consisted of some purple molecules, uh, some yellow molecules and some pink or reddish uh, uh, molecules. And we can separate these into different forms. So to now go more deeper into the um, actual analytical uh, chromatographies, then um, regarding the definitions, there are actually very many types of chromatographies and with chromatography we mean all these different sorts of possible chromatographies, um, but they all have one aim. They have the aim of separating compounds from one another. So we have a mix complicated mixture of different compounds and we want to separate. The need for such separations in analytical chemistry comes from the fact that most of the techniques that we have looked in our course so far and will be looking in the future are not sufficiently selective alone to detect and quantify only one compound that we are interested in. So very often, if not always, we have some kinds of interferences from our matrices. And um, a chromatography aims to help us here to first separate our complicated sample into individual compounds and then allow us to quantify these compounds after they have been carefully separated. Um, depending on which kind of interactions our chromatography is based on, we can have uh, adsorption chromatography or partioning chromatography, which is more uh, common in both gas and liquid chromatography today. Uh, we also want to detect the compounds separately. We might have be interested in only one of the compounds that is in our complicated sample mixture, or we might be interested in very, very many, if not all of the compounds in our mixture. And chromatography is uh, the most powerful method in separating the different mixtures into compounds. And that is available to analytical, analytical chemists. So what does this chromatography do then? Uh, 
I'm going to carry you through the chromatography process based on example from uh, Professor Sweat, who was actually the pioneer in chromatography. And he was uh, investigating different uh, color substances in plant materials. So in the flowers and leaves of different plants, and he was interested in figuring out if these are individual compounds or what compounds are there, how many they are, what color they are um, of. And he used a very sim simple system. He had a column, which we also have in analytical chromatography. And he filled this column with um, carbon, uh, with calcium carbon, uh, carbonate. So the particles of calcium carbonate and uh, he put an extract of um, if his samples, so of the plant extracts, on top of this column, and started adding a mobile phase, so a solution which carried these plant extract compounds through this column. So the column is the heart of the chromatography. And there are two other important players, uh, the stationary phase. So this is something with what the column has been filled very efficiently with. And um, this is uh, the phase with what the analytical, the molecules that we are trying to separate are interacting with. Additionally, there is a mobile phase and the mobile phase is used then to carry the analytes, carry the sample through the column. And uh, analyte is enabling compounds to pass through the column and um, to um, also uh, can interact with the stationary phase to um, weaken the interactions of the analyte and the stationary phase. So for example, in case of Sweat's experiments, uh, the stationary phase was the calcium carbonate. So we introduced the, sa the sample to the top of our column. And once we start applying the mobile phase, the sample starts moving through the column. And if our sample is a mixture of compounds, then we start seeing that there are two different bands of the compound uh, of the sample which belong to these two compounds. So our green sample, a green extract, is actually a mixture of uh, compounds, one that which appears as blue and the other one uh, which appears as yellow. And uh, we of course see that they start separating. And once we add more and more elements, we see that these peaks separate more and more. And once we have one of the compounds exiting from the column, so we see that it dilutes from the column, uh, we can have a detector here and detect this compound as well. So for example, in case of uh, colored compounds, we can look them by either visually or if we want to do quantitative analysis and the automated analysis, which we of course do in the analytical chemistry, uh, we can have, for example, uh, UV with spectrometer uh, here as a detector. So this detector tells us, aha, now one of the compounds has eluted from the column. And when we register the signal of the detector over the time as we are uh, carrying out the elution process, then we see a peak appearing here on our chromatograph. And once uh, we have continued diluting the sample, so adding mobile phase to the top of the column so that the sample components are carried through the column, and then we also see an appearance of a second peak. And uh, as a result, we can detect two components that our original mixture consisted of. So this was a short introduction to what uh, chroma how chromatography works. We continue with uh, more specific aspects in the next videos.